everyone. Welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Donna Chavis, and I wanted to read something that, that my guest said about himself before we meet him, and he said, From the dust of the Australian outback and the dust of my broken life, God made something that could be used for His glory. Woo! <laughs> wow. All the way from Australia, please welcome John Miller. Hi, John. Uh, hi, Donna. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. John, you are a healing evangelist. Yes. You go after the souls of people, get them, you know, saved, so, so passionate about yeah. that. But healing is such a big part of what you do as well. Um, do you actually believe that miracles still happen today? Now, I'm talking about miracles like Jesus did thousands of years ago. Is that still relevant today? Well, it certainly is, Donna. You know, we see all types of miracles from um, people who are quadriplegics in wheelchairs, motor neuron disease, Parkinson's, MS. People, uh, God create organs and bodies, supernatural miracles, and these are documented. You can see them on YouTube, and uh, we have doctors all in America and in Europe who actually send their patients to us. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That you don't hear of that very often. Now, I wanted to take you back. Uh, and I know that you're healed from all of this now, and so it's as a testimony to who you are now. Growing up was not easy for you, John. No, it wasn't. I, I, I was raised in a very dysfunctional home. My mother was had had uh, mental health issues, and she was in and, in and out of mental hospitals. And my father was an often drunk and angry man. He'd been through the war, and things happened in his life. So, so because Dad couldn't cope, when Mum wasn't well, they'd put us in children's homes. And so I grew up with a lot of um, confusion and fear and rejection and because I, you know, a child doesn't understand what's happening in this of world. Mm -hmm. And dad was always angry and upset. And so, so yeah, it, it, it was quite a lot of heartache and personal pain growing up. Sure. And I know by the time you were a teenager, 15 started getting into drinking, by 17 an alcoholic involved in gangs, so yeah. many things like that. But you had, shortly after that, you had what you called a, a pivotal moment in your life that actually brought you to the Lord. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting, but in, in somebody's coming to Christ, there's always a series of different events. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it began when I was born. When I was born, um, the famous actress Sean Connery's mother-in-law, she was a medical doctor, and she was the one who delivered me. She was a Christian, and that was Dr. Phil. Okay, let me just stop you in case, uh, <laughs> in case not everybody got that. I wanted to make a point if you heard what he said. The famous actor Sean Connery's mother-in-law mother is the person that <laughs> delivered him. She's the person that had her hands on yeah. him first. And what did she do? Yeah, she was the first person to hold me. Well, she was a me very famous medical doctor, Dr. Phyllis Salento in Australia. And she's a Christian. And she habitually prayed for every child she brought into the world. And she was our family doctor. And she, she had compassion for people who were down and out and having problems. So she took mum under her wing because of her mental health issues and took, took our family under her wing. Mm. And she personally wow. looked after me and delivered me and so I always say that James Bond's mother-in-law delivered me. <laughs> the first one to hold me. So, so she, she prayed for me at birth. And th then when I was put into a children's home, years later, I met the lady who's a nursing sister in charge of all the children. And she's a born-again Christian. And she told me that she used to pray for all the children every day in the home. Mm. So it's amazing how God has his hand on people's lives. Even when I was born as a child in the middle of all, all this distress, God was, had people, he moved people into my situation mm -hmm. to, to pray for me. He had a plan for you, didn't yeah. he? And now tell me about, about your brother and, and then uh, these other events that led to yeah, you. Yeah, well, well, well interestingly interesting enough, I got involved in gangs as a young man and uh, I dropped out of school very young and, and so did my brother. And my, and my brother became a drug addict and he became a Christian through Teen Challenge. And, um, and of course, he began to pray for me. I got involved in an outlaw motorcycle club. And, and uh, one day I had a terrible bike accident. But before I had the accident, my brother always said to me, John, when you die, you go to hell. And I used to laugh and mock him. But at that moment after the accident, I'm lying there and blood's coming out and, and the ambulance is there and they're trying to sew me up. The thought came to me how easy I, I could have died, Donna. And I thought, you know what? Eternity is forever. And so I'm in the ambulance going to the hospital, and once again, these two Christian bike guys, bikey guys, were, they saw the accident, 
and they were following the ambulance to the hospital and they were praying for the, they praying for the guy who had the accident. And so once again, God breathes on these two guys who were interceding, following the ambulance all the way to the hospital. So and, they saw the accident and yeah. they followed. Yeah. They followed the ambulance and they prayed for me. They decided to follow the ambulance and pray for the young guy who had the bike accident. So they're following the ambulance, praying for me. And here I'm lying there thinking about, I could have died, I could have gone to hell. And so, so I get into the hospital and they're sewing me up. And there's a guy with tattoos and a beard. He, he, he comes into the casualty ward. He looks down at me and says, I want to tell you this. He said that Jesus loves you, has a plan for your life. And he walked out. <laughs> and I'm lying there thinking, this is crazy. I, and so I got home out of hospital. I'm lying in bed. You know, all these events, people, people pray for my brother and his bikies and right from birth. And I'm lying in bed and I cried out. And I said, Jesus, if you're real, because I had so much torment in my life, a depression. I was a, I was a suicidal child. I used, to, mm. I used to threaten to kill myself. And I was a depressed child. I had night horrors and nightmares and bedwetting. And I was, I was so disturbed. And I'm lying there at night. I said, Jesus... If you're real up, they tell me you are. Please help me, set me free. God, I, whatever it is, I give my life to you. And I was so serious. I was so tormented. Yes. And then this peace came in the room and I fell asleep. And I woke up in the morning. I thought, I just feel so peaceful. What was that? That's a strange feeling. And I could see how, how bright the, the, the green leaves were and the flowers. I could hear the birds singing. And I thought, last night, I, I, for the first time, I cried out to God. I asked Jesus to forgive me and come into my life. I wonder if this is what it is to, for Christ, for Jesus to come into your life. And I, I felt so happy and excited. And my life was never the same again. I began my first Christian walk in this, in this um, uh, organization called the God Squad. Mm -hmm. It's for Christian mm -hmm. bikers mm -hmm. who got saved. And, um, and, and so I had an amazing encounter with Jesus. And my life's never been the same, Donna, never been the same. Oh, that is a good place to stop and take it a is. quick break. So we're going to fast forward just a little bit. John is a new believer. Uh, he gets married. He's got four young children and quite an adventure ahead of him. Stay with us. The constant worry of illness can be crushing. Not knowing what is going to happen, the stress of medical bills, and the discouragement of being unable to do the things you love can be depressing. Healing and faith are mysteries for most people. Sid Roth's ebook contains his personal list of healing scriptures. As you meditate on these promises, you tap into a supernatural portal called the Kingdom of Heaven. Faith and healing will no longer be a mystery. Download your free copy of the Healing Scriptures book at sidroth.org healing. Welcome back, everyone, to Something More. I'm here with John Meller, as you heard, all the way from Australia. And so John is about to start a new chapter in his life. He is a believer. He's a father. He's a husband. And he gets the opportunity to go to a place to minister that is beautiful, peaceful. I mean, it's just the perfect place to start a ministry. Right, John? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well it's, it's quite a different place. It's called Catherine, Northern Territory. Now, Northern Territory is like the Wild West. It's like in the middle of nowhere. And it's, it's a large, large indigenous Aboriginal population. And it's got uh, some of the highest murder rate, violence, alcoholism in the, in the whole nation. And, um, and so, but I, I had a heart to go there. I wanted to make a difference to the world. And God saved me. God delivered me. I had a heart to reach out to the lost and the broken. And and so I felt God called me and my family to go to this very remote place. It's in the middle of nowhere. So it wasn't exactly how I described no, it. Not really. <laughs> it's quite the opposite. In fact, in fact, it's quite. It's very normal to walk down the street and see people um, f uh, fighting each other. And uh, quite often we say we used to just try and help people save lives, mm. bottles and knives and, and fighting and, and drunken brawls, and it was just very very wild place but that's where I thought God wanted us to go mm -hmm. and so we went out there and um, and it was a very difficult place it's very expensive and so but the church I was that set me out with they taught us to fast and pray and so I did a lot of fasting <laughs> and praying and crying to God and so and so I had this outreach 
at a place called Binjari, which was about probably 50 miles out of town, and it was this Aboriginal community. And uh, it was a very wild place, but I used to go out there and I used to, and of course the people were tribal people. And my church was just a field, and, and I used to sit on the log and tell Bible stories, simple Bible stories. And how many uh, people would come out to? I had an old lady and three or four children. That was my church. An old lady and three or four children. That's what I had. <laughs> okay. And so, and so, and because the people weren't interested mm -hmm. in what I had to say, because missionaries had come and gone, and because spiritually and, they were very hard, weren't they? I mean, yeah, they well, were they, used to yeah, uh, demonic influence. Yeah, well, well and still, tribal things. Well, and, out there we dealt a lot with witchcraft. They mm -hmm. had the Gadachi man. Gadachi mm -hmm. man is like the witch doctor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he practices black magic, and people, people still, even today still live under fear of his Gadachi uh, men, yes. the uh, witch doctors, yes. and they and they do ceremonies where they sing, where they put people, they make people die just by chanting. It's all. But anyway, I went out there and uh, to Binjari, and um, and I still Bible stories. And after a while, after a while, I was, I was getting nowhere and I thought, God, I need a breakthrough. So I began to, I thought, I'm going to fast from the first day to the 10th of the month, first to the 10th of every month, fast and pray for them to be saved. Mm -hmm. Now, Donna, at this stage, I uh, didn't believe in healing. I didn't believe in healing. I mean, I, I knew healing was there, but I'd never seen people healed. Mm -hmm. And so, but I was praying for, the, for them to come to know Christ. Right. And so for right. five months, I was fasting and praying. I go out there and... The old lady used to come out, the few children. It, it's, it's quite discouraging because in town I had my main church and all I had was one church member. No. <laughs> one church member. All I had. But the, the problem was, Donna, sometimes I'd go visit, visit my, church, my church and he wasn't home. Well, and now I, I heard something about you too. I heard that, you know, when you first started out there that, that you, you, your church membership was low, so you wanted to practice your preaching, so you would go out and preach to the kangaroos. I used to preach to the kangaroos. No. <laughs> I used to go out in the bush, I used to preach to the kangaroos to practice my preaching. In fact, I even had a pet <laughs> kangaroo to sleep in bed with me called, called uh, Archie, Archie the kangaroo. <laughs> and I used to preach. Archie used to, when he was a, I found him as a baby, and I used to put Archie around a little sling in my, um, around my neck, I'd preach. When Archie got bigger, he, he used to, like a dog, used to follow me. So when I used to preach, Archie used to hop and down. Hop, mind you, all I had was one person in my church, and Archie used to hop and down, hop, hop, up and down one when I was preaching. One person and a kangaroo, yeah. Yeah, kangaroo. <laughs> but anyway, I went out to Binjari, and, I, and after five months of fasting and praying, there's a lady, old lady called Elsie, and she couldn't speak English properly. She could speak like broken, have a Creole, mm -hmm. a tribal language, Waterman mm -hmm. tribe, and she spoke this broken Creole. So I had to speak, speak very slowly and very simply, but anyway, one day after five months of fasting and praying, I noticed she always limped and she was in pain. So I had this impulse to, to pray for her. And it was just out, just out of the blue, I said, listen, I'll pray for you. And she, and I was on my log, I stood up and she was on the grass and, she, and the children helped her up. She came to the front where I was and I laid my hands on her leg because I'd seen people lay hands on people. The Bible says, so I prayed for her leg, but I thought nothing more of it. And, and after that day I left, and I used to go there every Saturday afternoon and have a meeting out there on the field of a few children and Elsie. Right. So the next week I went out there, there was a crowd of people. I thought, what are they here for? Is there, is there a big football match? What's happening? What happened? And they came to see me because Elsie got healed and told every, the whole tribe. So they wanted me to pray for them. And here was I. I didn't really believe in healing. I wasn't too sure it was real. And they said, pray for me, pray for me. So I was praying for them and God was healing them. I thought, how's this happening? I don't even believe in this really, you know. How's this healing happening? And so, so the people began to call me um, the mystery man who heals. And then I get invitations to even, even more remote places. Mm. I go out there and have these wild meetings of healing and, and you know, and the, and, and the witch doctors would have their, their, their ceremonies and try and curse me and, and dogs would come and bite me because the dogs are demonized out there. Mm. You mentioned the blood of Jesus that will come and attack you and bite you. So I used to carry a stick when I was praying for people. So I was sticking one hand, hit the dogs, and pray for people like this. It was wild, but it was fun. It was you fun. You know what? Something that you said, you were skeptical yourself when all this started happening, and then you started going into these remote villages and communities and praying for these people that were demonized, they were yeah. witch doctors, they believed in all this tribal, uh, traditional yeah. things. If what you had was not real, Man, you would have been eaten alive, That's right. I, I think. Seriously, I mean, it had to be real. It had to be real. And the thing is... It had to be real for them to even believe it, for them to, That's correct. to realize yeah. that. But, but the whole crazy thing was 
that, that I didn't, I, even though I was in a Pentecostal church, you, you know, I was, I classed myself as an unbelieving believer. I believed in Christ. I believed risen from the dead, second coming of Christ. But I, because I hadn't seen miracles, I didn't, inside my heart, I thought, okay, um, I didn't really believe it was real. I thought maybe it happened somewhere mm -hmm. in the Congo, but not where I live in Australia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I had always reservations and unbelief, but then God showed me he's real. Mm. And that moment, I had a revelation that all my life, even as a Christian, I was always trying to analyze things. Yes. You know, why yes. is that happening? How, yes. this, how, how can a lame person walk? How sure. can I was trying to come at God with my natural mind instead right. of my spirit man. Right. Right. And then I re had this rev revelation that changed my life. And God said, when are you just going to believe me? And that, you know what I said? I said, Lord, I'm going to believe you. I'm going to believe you. And so that, you made a decision to I'm believe. I made a choice. I made a decision. You made a decision. Believing is a to decision. To believe God. Yes. I said, Lord, from now on, I'm going to believe you. Wow. I think that's a choice that a lot of us need to make. Let's take a quick break. We've got lots more with John Mellor in just a moment, so please stay with us. You are watching ISN. The It's Supernatural Network. Welcome back, everybody. I am sure you are enjoying listening to John Mellor, who's with us today. And John, I wanted to talk about something. You know, th this has been an amazing story, but at a point in your life, devastation was just all around you. There was a horrible flood. Yeah. Uh, you lost everything. Yeah. Life was hard. Ministry was hard. And your wife that you were married to at the time, uh, it, it was tough. I mean, everybody yeah. knows that it was tough. And so she just could not do it anymore. And you yeah. wound up getting a divorce. Yeah. What did you think at that moment? You know, what happened was that um, um, we, we, we'd been serving on the mission field for years and years. And we, we saw so many wonderful things happening. And a flood came, 22 and a half meters, washed most of the town away, and we lost everything. Mm -hmm. Lost our home, the mission house was gone, the, uh, the church was wrecked, was underwater. The whole thing was destroyed and lost everything. And, and of course, financially, we were ma massive debt, lost everything. And uh, one day my wife said, um, I can't do this anymore. And, um, and she took off with uh, another man. And so here I was, after serving God, and giving everything up to serve God in the mission field, I, I, I lost everything. And right. then, then my health went, right. my back went, and, uh, and, and my home was a little caravan. It was a broken down little, I don't know what you call them, a little caravan. And here I was on my own, chronic pain. My wife was off with another man. The church was gone. The house was destroyed, mm -hmm. debt, everything. And I'm sitting there, and I'm feeling slightly depressed. I guess. <laughs> and I and guess. you know, it's, it's, ama yes. it's amazing how how, how when things fall apart, how the devil comes to rub the salt in. And the devil said, you know what? The voice said, you know what, John, you're finished. You're finished. You'll never minister again. Look at you. You've lost everything. Who's ever going to, you've, you've lost it. Your dream's finished. Where, and, and it's like, it's like the devil said, where's God now? Where's God now? And all of a sudden, in, my, in the, the emotional trauma, the physical pain, all, all of a sudden, all, all these prophecies began to come back. I had prophecies over years how God was going to use me to preach the gospel and, and even travel the world, see wonderful things and prophecies and scriptures and Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, you know, in, um, in you know, you know, 6, six 7, it says, God's not mocked what a man sows, he shall reap. And I, I, I reaped so much, so much good, good seed and so many good things. And, and, you know, and all of a sudden I got angry. I stood up and I screamed. I screamed and said, devil, you're a liar. You're going to be sorry you ever touched me. I'm going to make you pay for this. And, in, and at that moment, the people, I'm at a point, whatever happened, I'm going to serve God. You know, Job said, yet, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. I said, God, I will serve you. Whatever it costs my life, I will serve you. Mm. And I, I want to encourage viewers out there. Maybe you're going for a difficult time. Maybe you've started off good and things have fallen apart. I, I want to tell you right now, God's a faithful God. God's not mocked. What you sow, you will reap. You know, God is a faithful and a good God. God's a God of restoration. And you know what? From that point, Donna, 
I preached harder. I went out to the darkest areas <laughs> of amongst the Aboriginal, the That's tribal awesome. people, mm. preached the gospel. Mm. I'd like for you to take just a moment before we leave and pray for those that are watching. That'd be a great privilege. Right now, I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray for you right now. You know, miracles are normal. And, um, you know, recently we were on TV in the UK, I, I part of the air and different radio programs. People getting healed right across the nation. One lady was semi-disabled in, in, uh, in her bed. As, as I was praying over the airways, she just stood up and her daughter, was, her daughter was amazed. God healed her. You know, right now, as I pray, God, the power of God is going to flow through the screen and God's going to heal you. I'm going to pray right now. And all I ask is this, just like a small child, just relax and receive right now. Lord Jesus, we give you the glory that you are a healer. And thank you, Lord, with no distance in prayer. And right now, I take authority. I bind and break the plans of the devil right now. I decree healing right now for every person. I command pain right now to leave necks and shoulders, pain leaves spines and hips and legs. Arthritis go right now in Jesus' name. Rheumatoid, osteoarthritis, be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, I break cancer right now. I command right now every tumor to shrink and disappear. I command right now even the effects of cancer treatment, be healed in Jesus' name. Every cancer cell to die. And Lord, heal minds right now. There's depression right now, heaviness right now now, schizophrenia, bipolar, autism, Asperger's right now, every mind problem right now, be healed in the name of Jesus. I command the heaviness to go right now, be healed. Heal sinuses, Jesus, right now, and toothaches right now, neck problems, damage, painful necks, be healed in the name of Jesus. Painful, frozen shoulders be healed right now, necks, um, also hips right now, God, I command hips to be healed, knees right now, and ankles and feet. Plantar fasciitis be healed now in the name of Jesus. Every skin condition, I command rashes to go right now. I declare healing for eczema and psoriasis right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Headaches, migraines right now be healed in the name of Jesus. Blindness right now. I command blind eyes to open. open. Short sightedness, detached retina, glaucoma, macular degeneration, every eye problem, itchy eyes right now. Even problems of, of, of um, tear ducts right now. I decree miracles for eyes in the name of Jesus. Clear vision in Jesus' name. I command ears to open right now. Deafness go right now. Ring of the ears, tenderness be healed now in the name of Jesus. Every skin problem right now be healed in Jesus' name. Prostates right now be healed in Jesus' name. Bladders be healed. Incontinence right now be healed. Pain in the abdomen, mystery pain right now. And kidneys and livers. Every organ be healed in the name of Jesus. I declare creative miracles right now. Even organs that grow that are being taken out. Uh, uh, miracles right now. Every inflamed joint be healed. All pain to go right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Set them free. And allergies right now. All sorts of allergy problems right now from pollen and from, from wheat and dairy and peanuts, whatever. Be healed in Jesus' name. Set, be, be free right now in the name of Jesus. Tennis elbow damage, um, uh, uh, elbows and tendonitis and carpal tunnel and rheumatoid uh, arthritis from fingers. I command hands to be released and paralysis right now. I come against uh, damaged spines and necks, paralysis. I command life to come back. Create miracles of the muscles growing back. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. In your wonderful name, Lord, set them free. We thank you, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, just move now by your power through the screen, into their bodies, into their minds. Set them free right now. Every condition be healed. Even conditions I haven't named, Lord, touch them right now. Lung conditions, yes, asthma, yes. eczema, asthma and heart problems. Let hearts be healed now in the wonderful name of Jesus. Be healed. Every condition right now. Right now, just start to thank him for healing you. Just have to thank Him for touching you right now. So we thank you, Lord. You've touched us. You've healed us. Your, your power is flowing through us. And we receive it right now in your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> thank you, John. I know you all have enjoyed John Miller today. Thank you for being with us. And please join us again next time for something more.
For most of John Miller's life, he had wrong concepts about healing that kept him from praying for the sick. But God gave him the supernatural keys which led to a healing explosion where he continuously sees miracles occur almost every day wherever he travels. His healing ministry has even been featured on two secular TV programs in Australia, A Current Affair and Today Tonight. Now he wants to help you receive your own healing and equip you to successfully pray for the healing of others. I believe that God has called all believers to lay hands on the sick. So you can reach out and see miracles and you can heal the sick. Call now and get John Miller's book, Keys to Healing, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, Healing in Jesus' Name. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9592. When you read John's book, Keys to Healing, you will receive the keys to access your own healing and you will be activated to minister healing to others in need, wherever and whenever you find them. Through this book, you will learn that it is God's will to heal you. Understand how to access the power of the cross and walk in victory over every adversity. Discover the keys to receive your healing. Find out how to identify the roots of sickness. Learn the keys on how to minister healing to others. Understand what to do if your healing doesn't happen. Discover how to avoid the deception of New Age healing, which leads to bondage and demonic influences. We have people all around the world in they read the book Keys to Healing, and then they begin to pray for the sick, and they themselves begin to experience the same thing I see. They see people healed and miracles happen in their lives. You will also receive John and his wife Julie's three part audio CD teaching, Healing in Jesus' Name. Through this teaching, you will be equipped to understand more about healing in Jesus' name, and you'll be encouraged that you too can be used by God to heal the sick. The CD teachings is a, is a powerful teaching where I, where I actually break down the basic steps. It's very easy to understand that, that, um, that, that anyone can use to see people heal. We talk about things like a foundation to healing, the power of the cross, talk about how to heal the sick, talk about how to receive healing, um, uh, things that, that can hinder us in healing. John also prays an impartation over you to receive your own healing and to receive the anointing to minister healing to others. On the CDs we actually have where I pray impartation prayer. Now many times when I pray for people, People for impartation, they then go and pray for the sick and see miracles. And when I pray, they can receive that same power. I can't wait for him to pray impartation for you, pray for your sicknesses. But even more important, he says it's the revelation and the teaching that heals the sick. It's not a special person, it's a special message. Don't miss out on getting John Miller's book, Keys to Healing, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, Healing in Jesus' Name. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9592. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9592 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.